Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Behind the Group podcast. I am DJ Keo. And I am Basil Barrington. And we are back with another episode of The Mandalorian. Episode number three, The Convert. And um, IMDb gave it a 7.3. I don't know about that, dude. <laughs> I don't know I about mean, that. It, it would be 7.3 for another show, but not for The Mandalorian. We yeah. get to why we say that when we talk about this show. Yeah, um, I'm trying to find out who played uh, the um, G68 or, you know, um, Alana Kane. That's uh, Katie O'Brien. Okay. Yeah. Hmm, was, okay. G something something. G68. They're, they're just throwing out numbers. It's like uh, L51, like, L52. Uh, yeah, it's like, like Battleship. Just I'm throwing like, out numbers and letters. <laughs> if you're going to give me a number, I want to be the B-52s, <laughs> you know? Yeah. That's what I want to be. <laughs> Nothing else. I, but... I had a question about this because I was what? thinking about like, <laughs> okay, so in the Star Wars movies, uh, Emperor Palpatine, he took over the system, but he didn't change the system. He just basically, he weaseled his way into control over the system, right? Mm -hmm. So... The people there that are working for the emperor, the empire, if you will, they're just doing their regular jobs they would have normally done with a different government. That's it. Right? Because he, he took, he just took power of the system, but the system didn't change. The yeah. system is still the same. Mm -hmm. So it would be like the equivalent of if a new president took over, right? You know, like they did some evil stuff, yada, 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 and they kind of took over other planets and blew other things up. But generally, outside of getting rid of the Senate, it was basically everything's the same. If you want, like you, during this show, right? They go to Coruscant. Coruscant looks the same way it did in episode one or episode two. The Tag of the Clones. Like Coruscant looked the exact same way. Mm -hmm. Nothing has changed. They even, the people on Coruscant even said that, ah, it's just the government, whatever, whatever, right? There's no big difference. Just keep my head down and keep working. So, like, my thinking of, like, you wouldn't have to, you know, brainwash people out of being part of the system because it's just a job and That's these it. guys are in power like it's like going from democrats to republicans like it wouldn't be a big deal for them based in the in the center of power on coruscant it's does my thinking of it yeah. what, do you, what do you think about that would it have been that big of a change it didn't seem like it would be no so this new government is called the new republic right yeah, they just switched yeah. government. They switched three governments on our yeah. in our the so, timeline of Star Wars. Three different just, governments. Okay, so it sounds like it's just the difference of political ideology because, like you said, the Empire mm -hmm. was sort of a little evil, right? <clears throat> um, but they're still doing stuff. They're running the right. The, uh -huh. the trains ran on time, if you will. Exactly. Part, part of the phrase. In in the New Republic is a nicer version of the Empire. You know. Yes. Yeah. So they're still um, doing shady stuff. Yeah. They're still throwing mm -hmm. people in jail. They're right. still shooting things down. Yeah, yeah. Same stuff the Empire it's was doing. It's the same stuff. They man. just got so, they're running a different flag. Yeah. I don't I don't see a big difference there, like I said, you know, because um I'm I'm watching The Mandalorian mm -hmm. and I'm also watching The Bad Batch, you know, which is the mm -hmm. animated series. <clears throat> and yeah. there are like a lot of similarities um between the two. And, mm -hmm. you know, with season two of Bad Batch and season three of The Mandalorian, like, wow, did, you know, and but of course, you know, uh, John Favreau and Dave Filoni, they uh, produce um, The Mandalorian yeah. and Dave Filoni so, produces and created um, The Bad Batch. Yeah. So that was my question. Like, so Dave Filoni is producing Bad Batch, too. So like this is they're basically running the storylines for all of this content that's yeah. not in the movies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Apparently. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, because you know we were talking offline, and I was saying like in a Bad Batch, um, mm -hmm. the storyline is they're destroying all the clones. You know, mm -hmm. you know, Crosshair, everyone. You know, and they mm -hmm. but they're using the clone technology to create a more, um, you know, just militarized clone force. And mm -hmm. in the Mandalorian. They're using the clone technology to clone humans. So there's some similarities there. And I'm just like, what? Why didn't anyone <laughs> say that? No one said well, it. Cause we, we didn't see any of this in any of the movies, did we? No. Yeah, they, they've alluded. Okay, the only time they really talked about cloning was Attack of the Clones, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a, for, and like, uh, I think uh, episode four, 
when um Obi Wan tells tells Luke that you know he fought with his father in the Clone Wars. That's it. That's the <laughs> this is as much as they really talked about cloning. They don't yeah. generally go into heavy detail about it. Attack of the Clones is I think the first time they even show what it was. Uh, but um. It, it it's not that it's not pressed heavy into what it is and what, what the results are realistically because the clones are all wearing helmets so you don't even know it you just yeah. you hear the voice a mm -hmm. boba fett's voice that's all you hear right <laughs> so yeah it's like uh yeah it's not that big a deal though yeah. i wouldn't say it's a big deal yeah and then the bad batch the uh the clone world there um you know mm -hmm. where they live or where they're created that's destroyed the Empire completely destroyed that. So that's why they're taking the Was technology. They, 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 they Kamino, destroyed yep. Kamino? They, they completely flattened it, dude. It's destroyed. Jeez, that's bad, man. <laughs> See, this is the thing. I'm, I'm out of touch. Like, I've seen all the movies <clears throat> multiple times, except the last three. I, I watched those ones, and I was like, I'm done with this. But uh, the, other, the other six, I've seen a bunch of times. And... I watched Mandalorian now. I watched that. Uh, I watched Book of Boba Fett, mm -hmm. and I watched uh, Andor, mm -hmm. and then that's it for me. In the start, oh, clone. Um, the what's the cartoon? The oh, cartoon um, with the Anakin the, and um, the Clone Wars. Clone Wars, yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I've seen that's that's all I've seen of this expanded Star Wars universe. Like I haven't watched anything from the Bad Batch, and so like. When we were talking offline about what's going on in the show on The Mandalorian, which deviated heavily from Mandalorian stuff oh and then went back to Coruscant, just talked about this other thing for 40 minutes. This is a good long time. Like at least half an hour is a long time. Oh, no, it was right? 40 minutes. It was 40 minutes. It, was like 40, it, it felt like 40 yeah. minutes. Yeah, it was 40 minutes so, for sure. I'm, I was out of source because I'm like, I, I remember this guy from the first episode, and then that was it. <laughs> I, I remember he's trying to clone Baby Yoda. And that that was it, and then, and then or like you no, know, he was trying to do some experiments on Baby Yoda. Yeah, yeah. And exactly. For whatever reason, we don't know why, <laughs> but he just wanted him back. And yeah, you then, know. Then the Mandalorian stopped doing any bounty hunting for the rest of the series. So you know what else I noticed about this episode? You alluded to this last week, but this mm -hmm. episode was dark in terms of the quality, the picture quality. Visually, it was dark. Yeah. Visually, Visually dark, it was dark. Very dark. Yeah. I was like, I, I turned off all of my lights and I still wasn't able to see. And I was like, I'm not messing mm -hmm. with the TV because this is weird. You know? <laughs> so I was like, this I, is as dark as anything. Yeah, I turned the HDR off and it still looked dark. So I was like, I, wow. I give up, man. I don't, know what, I don't know what's happening here. What do you think is going on with that? Why is the picture quality so dark? The, visually, it looks so dark. I don't know. Like, I guess, the, you know, with the colors and, and lighting is to convey a feeling. I guess it's to make you feel bleak, something like that. I don't know. It's yeah. it's mm -hmm. unnecessary because if you watch Star Wars movies, Star Wars is bright and colorful. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> and very everything's happening during the day, except I I think uh, Anakin and Obi Wan fight was the nighttime and Mustafa. But yeah. like generally, everything's happening fairly during the day unless they're in space. Exactly. And even that's well lit. <clears throat> so like <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. I think they're doing too much over here at the Disney. They're doing too much with the trying to be cinematic or whatever. Like they got yeah. cool at mm -hmm. Star Wars is co colorful and light. Mm -hmm. That's the whole point. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Now you know in this episode you had basically two storylines. You had the Mandalorian, and then you had yeah. you know Doctor Persian. So in terms of the Mandalorian plot line, it starts off with you know them basically bouncing. <laughs> yeah. And going to this like covert, um, you know, uh, uh, Mandalorian or a Mandalorian. Yeah, the planet. space chase. Yeah, mm -hmm. the space battle. Go to yeah. Bo-Katana's planet. They mm -hmm. blow her house up. She was the <laughs> only person, it was, which is still baffling to me. She had a whole castle to herself, and Nothing. she's just sitting on the throne no, by herself. No PlayStation. That's so weird. No Sony, no say, like, like you know, nothing. No no PS4, um, you know, no DJ equipment, nothing. <laughs> you didn't have like a you know, like an Alfred Pettyworth doing stuff for you. you <laughs> right, robot exactly. Butler. That you know, you're not that's so it's such a weird thing to me that she's on a whole planet by herself. Yeah. That is so weird. Like there's no people, like she doesn't have any friends, like a best friend, braid her hair, like she's just like, do nothing. Just sit on the throne. It's such a weird anyways. So mm -hmm. they fight there, they blow mm -hmm. up her castle, and she's like, where am I going to go now? And so he brings them over to the 
the Mandalorian cult mm -hmm. and they're like, hey, we took a bath and like, we're approved it. Mm -hmm. Pulls out the water, <laughs> proves it. Everyone, like, you guys are back in the cult now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I would like to see what happens to Bo Katana. Is she going to be like, I'm never going to take my helmet off again? Because she doesn't believe in it. It's kind of a, a thing to do at yeah. this moment. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't understand where they're going with this. But I, I, I called I really it, like I that. called it at our, um, in our last review. I said, well, she was in the water too. So she has been yeah. redeemed. And what happens? She goes there, she's redeemed. They're basically saying, well, have you taken your helmet off since you came out of the water? No. Okay. You know, this is the way. You can leave anytime you want to. Two hours. Yeah. She's, we'll they, do it she, she said, you can leave anytime you want to. However, you know, um, mm -hmm. I do think that she is going to keep her helmet on throughout, like, for another two or three episodes. I think so. Because I think. Well, you know, she, when as long she was, she's there, she's not going to take it off. Yeah, and when she was there, she did, you could just tell, you, you can't see on her face, but just her body language, she, she felt a level of camaraderie after, you know, mm -hmm. they were like, hey, you know, welcome to the Mandalore, blah, 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 blah. You know, she felt like, you know, she was a part of something again. So, because, again, she's in a castle by herself with no PlayStation, <laughs> no DJ equipment, <laughs> you know, um, no TVs, you know, she doesn't have Roku, she doesn't have Amazon, yeah. she's not getting deliveries, she's there by herself. Mm. There are like a there's a drone or two there, but that's it. So it's completely destroyed. You, she has no place else to thing. go. thing. How come there wasn't any castle defenses? Like, you know, like rocket launchers, yeah. laser beams on top of the castle. There was mm -hmm. nothing. That's yeah. not like the, the robot butler should have been like, I got you, don't worry. I'm gonna right. turn the stuff on and defend the castle. You didn't do anything. That's such a weird thing to me. Nothing it it seems all. more like a plot point to push the thing forward rather than a logical thing for somebody who's a warrior princess. She's Xena. <laughs> She's space Xena. She's a warrior princess. Mm -hmm. I would assume that she would have castle defenses and stuff like that because she comes from a race that got annihilated. There's no way they would just be like, oh, oh, no. We blow this thing up. Oh, well. Like, it seems... It, all of this stuff seems weird. Her storyline seems weird. Like she had a team, they all left. Her team was really three people. Like <laughs> I, I don't understand. Uh, we'll move on. We'll move on. Right. Uh -huh. Um. And you know, but during the um the Mandalorian scenes, only two. Um. This space mm -hmm. sort of battle was pretty cool, or at least the air battle. Yeah, was pretty it, cool, it felt like know? Star Wars. That it felt that like was Star Wars. Cool. Um. And then the end, like when you know they went to you know the covert Mandalorian spot, the Mandalorian mm -hmm. cave, um. And you know they were redeemed, and then they just stopped it mm -hmm. right there. So let's go yeah. to the subplot because the subplot mm -hmm. was what I mean. Oh. I what have one question to ask before we go to subplot. Okay. What's up? So those the TIE fighters, they're not gonna fly in space like that. They came from a spaceship. Where's the spaceship from? Where where yeah. is where is that spaceship? They they're not, they're not flying by this little tiny cockpit. They're not flying in space like that. So where'd they come from? They never showed you that. <laughs> it just some tie here's some TIE fighters. There's some action. They oh, never showed you where they came from. And they never they said been, to us, they should have. You're right, because there should have been a giant spaceship somewhere hovering right, across the planet. Right. And they should have know. known that too. Because mm -hmm. that was that would show up on your sensors. Right. So that's got that's also kind of weird. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, that's what I'm saying. So, like it felt that whole storyline felt like if, we just yeah. need something to happen to move the plot forward. It felt like the um well, I'll get into that after we talk about the subplot. So yeah, yeah, okay. Let's, let's go talk to the subplot. subplot. The yeah. subplot. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going on with the subplot, but I will say this. Mm -hmm. And this was one of the most disappointing things of this episode. Mm -hmm. The subplot was so obvious. Like, Dr. Mm -hmm. like L52 or L51, whatever you're, Dr. Pershing. You did not <laughs> realize right out the gate that yo, you're being set up. That was. I mean, ridiculous. you're being set up. <laughs> this woman, like you know, um, you know, G sixty eight, you know, um, Kane. She she knew everything. She she. I mean, she knew how to jump the train. You know, get to the like the yeah, spaceship. Like, the whole night. You got to jump right here. On she knew pad, where to get the biscuits nowhere, from. Like... I mean, she she. They basically, um, you know, enticed them with biscuits. Biscuits. Yeah. So, okay, so he goes on this, he goes inside the battleship, the spaceship, mm -hmm. right? 
the Empire or whatever spaceship. He goes inside and he he picks some stuff up out of the lab. So he's supposed to do cloning stuff. He picks up some little samples and throws them in the case. Mm-hmm. That's all he needed. <laughs> that seems like <laughs> I thought you need the whole lab. Like, yeah. You know, the test tubes, you don't need anything. Like some and computers. He just the, does some stuff in the backpack. I was like, all right, let's get out of here. Like, what? And you know, the, the case he was throwing stuff in, he didn't even fill it up. It was just like two know, or three like, items and that's it. Just like, dude, you could have just put this under your jacket. The other thing is, okay, you're right? putting all this stuff. You're putting all this stuff in this case that looks like it's a case from like the Empire. Yeah. Now you're going to go on the train with this case. That's another thing. That that thing with the train was so ridiculous because, okay, the robot here is collecting tickets, right? <laughs> I will believe the robot is programmed to know when somebody's trying to evade paying a ticket. Yeah. So they will alert something. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Alarms will go off. Mm-hmm. You, the robot's watching them. It's not like it wasn't watching these guys jump between cars. Now, I, I lived in New York for a little bit, and when you go between the subway, somebody's like, yo, hey, man, stop doing that. Like, somebody. Yeah. This guy, mm-hmm. the robot's watching these guys go through the subway cars and, like, nothing. Just watching faster. Like, this seems silly, man. <laughs> this whole thing was silly to me. I don't know. That that process about being on a train and not having a ticket was silly. Then the, you going on the ship and, and bring, basically, it looked like he got a ham sandwich and some bags. And put that into this thing container. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> He's out. <clears throat> that seems silly to me too. You don't have enough stuff for cloning. What do you, ah, it's him getting caught for cloning, whatever he's trying to do, going to the spaceship. That also seems that was blatantly obvious that you don't trust her. She seems too interested. And it's, it's like so a little bit easy too, too. Everything is so easy. She knew where all the dead bodies were. She knew like how to yeah, jump off yeah. the train. She knew like everything. And this, I mean. Dude, I have it in my I have it in my head at okay mm-hmm. when when the when the biscuits were in front of his door, I was like, oh, someone's mm-hmm. trying to set him up. Then at yes. like Mark 3803, mark it. Mm-hmm. Like watch the whole joint. Go to um Mark 3803, 38 minutes, mm-hmm. the three-second mark, right? I was like, mm-hmm. oh, you know what? This is a setup. Then at 48, 45, 38, the 45, 38 mark, I was like, this is totally a setup because <laughs> she knew how to get into the doors. You know, she knew, she knew how to get into different structures. And I was just like, this is mm-hmm. too easy. It's too easy. Yeah. He's basically yokel to go do the thing, to get the thing for her. He's like, a, <laughs> she's, he's the sucker that Gwen did all the heavy work for her. Yeah. And then she just walked away. <clears throat> which, like she don't know what's going on. And she just took she took the package too. So like, right, mm-hmm. it, it seems it, it was fairly obvious from jump. Other thing too, what's up with the space lollipops they had? Like <laughs> the things that are glowing in the dark. <laughs> what was that? The um the that only thing about this episode, I mean, visually, uh, Coruscant looks mm-hmm. really good. Visually, it looks great. Yeah, yeah, it look it looked you good. Know? Yeah, yeah, but um, something else that kind of weirded me out and there's a hole there but i'm quite sure they're gonna like patch it up at some point they better when the, when the mandalorian um when mando went into the water and then mm-hmm. bo katan picked him up and passed this like alien a monster or something right what was that mm-hmm. what was the monster what was the alien that's supposed to be like the the monster that the crest thing that's on the wall Mm-hmm. Like that's supposed to be their, I guess their spirit animal or something. I don't know. Like, Living a, underwater. This is the okay. problem. Mm. This is the problem with the show like this. Boba Fett was a cool character that didn't need all the extra explaining. He's just he's a cool character. You don't know where he's from. He got a helmet. It's got a dent in it. He's a bad guy. He gets bad guys for Darth Vader. That was it. That's as far as we need to go with this story. Because when we add in all this extra lore and whatever, whatever, it kind of takes away the magic of who's this guy in the helmet with the green thing? Mm-hmm. He's got rocket launcher on his back. This guy's a gangster. Like that's all we need to know. George Lucas is like that's all you need to know. He's cool. You want to play him? You want his <clears> toy? <throat> that's it. <laughs> Shut up. Buy my stuff. Yeah. That's all you needed. <laughs> this is um. You know, I don't know about this episode because it's almost like I mean. The, the writing seems okay 
but just the execution of the episodes seems out of whack. It, yeah, it it was competent, but for me, and we, we talked about this offline, I want the Mandalorian to be about a space bounty hunter going on adventures with baby Yoda. That's what I wanted. Yeah. That's all I wanted. <laughs> I don't need any connection to the star Wars universe. I don't need you to go and be like, this is going to show you what, what happened in the rise of Skywalkers, the yada, yada. I don't want, I want any of that stuff. I want some guy that's in star Wars going on cool missions, flying in space, you know, being cool. That's it. That's all I wanted for this yeah. show. Mm -hmm. And what we're getting from this show is everything but that. He hasn't done any bounty hunting since season one. Uh, I get it because he's got Baby Yoda. He's got Grogu. Okay, cool. He's got a kid he's now, He's got change his life around. He's a father He's got now. a little son <laughs> that's 50 years older than him. So, all right, fine. <laughs> he's got a son. But, <laughs> you know, like being on the run where people were looking for him, that was good. That that made good adventure. Like he had stuff to do. He couldn't stay one place. Yeah. And then, but somehow, he, the other beef with all the Star Wars stuff is they keep finding a way to go back to Tatooine. Like there's thousands of planets in the galaxy. Why do you need to be on Tatooine? That's the only planet you can go to. Yeah. This this Mandalorian show has gone to Tatooine like thirty times already. It's only <laughs> it's only like um a few planets now that you see in like Boba Fett. You know, yeah. the Mandalorian. You know, it's just like, wow, what's going on? It's just, I don't know about this, it's man. Like I said, movies too. yeah, I don't know about this. I don't know if, um, I don't know if this is the last season, but, um, just for I'm an losing entire, interest, man. <laughs> right. Entire 58 uh, minutes, almost an hour. And the meat and potatoes was 15 minutes. That's it. That's it. Here's the thing, right? If you made a show about this <clears throat> doctor and some covert spy thing on Coruscant. I watched that, mm -hmm. but this is not what I signed up for. I signed up for the Mandalorian and Baby Yoda. That's what I signed up for. That's it. Yeah. I did not mm -hmm. sign up for Doctor Random Person from a random show from a random thing. I Eating did not biscuits. sign up for that thing. Come on, you know, eating biscuits. Yes, the space I mean, like... biscuits. I don't care. <laughs> now I do have a question. Now, <laughs> yeah, do you think those biscuits was a uh, shortbread or something totally different? <laughs> Because I, I think are, I think people want to know what type of cookies or biscuits they this, were. Those are know? Ted Lasso biscuits, man. Like, if you're not watching Ted Lasso, you need to watch it. That's the he's making those biscuits. That's all I'm gonna say. It's oh Ted Lasso goodness, edition. Dude, you know, this episode. <laughs> I'm not quite sure about this episode. You know what? Let's rate this episode. This is a the Mandalorian water number three convert. Okay. What do you? Um, I, I, okay, you gotta rate. You gotta rate in two parts because one episode was Mandalorian. And the other episode was Doctor Nobody from Star right. Wars. Mm -hmm. so this okay. is the two episodes. So okay. the Mandalorian episode with the space fight was pretty cool. It, it felt very Star Wars-y. I give that a seven. Doctor Nobody from Star Wars, I give that a three. Right? Yeah. So this is, that's my feeling of it. I, I was watching it, and I was just like, oh, make this thing hurry up. Get back to Mando. What are we doing here? This is oh. dumb. Okay, I know. So, I know. There's a bigger story somewhere about yeah, it, but mm -hmm. I just don't care. Yeah, I I don't care. There's no way you're gonna make that story interesting to me. So, what would you rate the episode just on a whole? On a whole, I give it a five. Okay, okay. So we're kind of like in the same pocket. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing. Okay, so mm -hmm. I'm gonna rate like okay. So we're gonna I'm gonna give it two ratings here. So the doctor rating, mm -hmm. I'm definitely giving a three. You know, I don't understand that, right? <clears throat> The I Mandalorian. That's what I, say. I don't care. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't, don't care. care. <laughs> you know, be, and like for you to like have, I mean, you, you obviously don't have, this guy obviously don't have street knowledge because mm -hmm. if he did, oh, he would understand on. that, yeah, you know what, like I'm being set up or how can mm -hmm. I capitalize on this? So he doesn't understand that, right? The Mandalorian mm -hmm. portion, I'm going to give an eight because it felt like Mandalorian, right? Yeah, but that the, was cool. All that was stuff cool. was cool. Yeah, the, like the first half and like the bottom, the, the back half. Like, cool, right? Mm -hmm. The episode mm -hmm. on a whole, I'm also giving a five because I don't understand this show anymore, to be honest yeah. with you. Like, where's it going? What, yeah. What's happening? Like, is this guy, like, um, wh what is he doing? I mean, like, where the where's the adventure? You know, like, um, in, in mm -hmm. the subplot was, I don't know if it was a side plot or a subplot, but it just felt completely out of whack, and I'm not sure why 
we were introduced to this like 40 minutes of a subplot. I don't get that. I, I think that this subplot is going to lead into a different show. And <laughs> we're going to like season two of Mandalorian had the whole subplot with Luke and then the subplot with uh, what's the name? Uh, that's the girl that plays uh, the other Jedi. Um, oh, um, damn it. I forgot her name. You're talking about Ahsoka Tano? Yeah, so good mm-hmm. time. There's two different episodes yeah. that mm-hmm. took place outside of Mandalorian that had nothing to do with Mandalorian. Yeah. So, like, I think that this is one of those things that's going to break off and lead to a different show. And they're hopefully, they put it into the Mandalorian to get us to want to watch it for another thing because the highest rated show, most popular thing on Disney, which I'm sorry did not work for me. I'm never, I'm never going to watch Dr. Nobody Star Wars show. No. Doogie Hauser in space. I'm like, I don't care about it. I just don't care. That's no. not Star Wars. No, it Star isn't. Wars is not Doctor No. Star Wars is Jedi. Star Wars is the Empire. That's that's Star Wars. It, this other stuff I, is irrelevant to Star Wars. It's irrelevant. It's a side thing in the background that's happening that you don't care about. Nobody cares about it. It's a side show, literally. You. you know, and you know yeah. the the other thing is this, like you know the 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 uh, the Doctor Persian and the um um. Mm. You know, uh, um, Alana Kane version, you know, mm. that whole 40 minutes, that yeah. subplot, that looks so much like a TV show, didn't it? It yeah, looked it like a TV like show. Like, it's, it's like Star Wars ER or something yeah. like that. Yeah, I just needed ads, you know. I just, <laughs> if they if they ran ads, it would felt, you know, it would have been a TV show. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. You, this is a law and order <laughs> space view or whatever. I don't know. Like this is it not it. Feel man. like Star Wars. <laughs> I don't. I mean, why do you? Yeah. I mean, a seven point eight or what was it? A seven point nine that they gave this show are, on IMDb. I don't. I still understand 7.3. why people are so gassed off of the universe of Star Wars just to give everything a basic rating. Yeah. They did the same thing for Boba Fett, which is insane. Like, yeah. That show doesn't deserve any of those ratings. Mm-hmm. That show is a zero all across the board. So Boba Fett was a disaster. Thing. That's not coming back. Yeah, disaster. Oh, they're done. They're done. They're they're never gonna come. You back. can't come back, back with that, dude. Impossible. So like, yeah, but like it felt like it's Star Wars. It's okay. Like it's gonna. Don't worry, guys. Just hang in there. It's gonna lead somewhere. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not. You Disney know they're gonna start canceling things soon. They have um eight episodes here, right? Mm-hmm. Um, for for the Mandalorian, we're at episode number three, and we haven't gone over. I think the first episode we gave a seven. We haven't gone over a seven, dude. With this, like any of this, at all. Like I'm... last last week, um, episode number two, we gave a five. Mm-hmm. This episode, episode number three, we gave a five. Yeah, I'm I'm sorry, it's losing its luster because it's not focusing on the main character. Yeah, it's got to do with everything but the main character, which is not that's not a good recipe for a hit show. That's that's when you like imagine the A team and the A team is worried about like the some doctor in a town across the street from the A team. <laughs> I don't want to see that. Right. I came to watch the A team. <laughs> like yeah, let's say it, like no one they know better than to do that. This is uh, insane. Just episode, everything about that's insane. I'm I'm um thus far with the Mandalorian. I'm totally disappointed. Totally. Oh, yeah, it's trash. You this know. season's trash. Yeah, so Absolute we do trash. have a we do have something coming up next week. The um mm-hmm. Halo starts next week, so maybe that'll be good. I don't know. We'll see. They maybe they listened to the fans and they picked it up because I I'm losing interest in in uh, Mandalorian. Yeah, I'm yeah, sorry to you know. say this. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely losing interest in it. Well, there you have it. Another episode of the Behind the Groove podcast. I am Basil Barrington. I'm DJ Keel. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And until next time, peace. All right.